Morning, Diva. I gotta knock some stuff out on my work laptop here for like five minutes, uh, but I'll be getting started here soon.
What up, what up? Uh, that is not the current project. I don't know why that's set as the project. Uh, let me try to fix that. Command uh, project update foo. Is that how I do that? No. Command update project foo. Project. Okay. Command update project which a Twitch SDK written. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Let me just get my monitors up because I'm running a cron or I'm running a migration job on the left side here. And that's looking good. That's looking good. The CPU usage is looking good. All right, chat, everything is looking good. Good for you. Great, okay. The song, thank you for the follows too while I was gone. Uh, UK Rustation, Oscar just programming, bad OSC. What up, Owen? Um, the song is Human by John Bellion, but I see what you're doing. <laughs> All right, we, I need to check some uh, repos on GitHub quick. And we should post on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, my allergies are so bad today. Uh, GitHub. Just do that. And then let's also go to ChatGPT. And we're going to say, create an image for a Twitch stream called a camel and coffee. Gleam edition. Jump over here, come back here, go to my notifications. Hmm, interesting. Thank you for the follow, Billy Bob Buttery. It's confusing because well, let's um, let's validate our findings here. Good, Billy. We're just getting started here. I'm uh, responding to some GitHub notifications, and then we're jumping back into uh, decoding some JSON with Gleam and uh, adding some new endpoints. Uh, where do we want to go? We want to go here. Pam list grep uh, OCaml format. So let's say uh, OPAM remove OCaml format. 
and we're gonna reinstall this. That's perfect, bad cop. I'm gonna save that. I'm not gonna use it today. If you can make one like that that says Gleam Edition, 100% tweeting. So now if we say opam install OCaml format. <laughs> all right all right all right i'm about to get paged one second chat i need to set batch size to lower let's bump that down see if we can get this q under control <laughs> Uninstall a camel format, a camel LSP server. So now, theoretically, one of these is going to have that as a dependency. Is it when you make a new switch? Now I'm like super confused. are so bad.
I can never spell courtesy right. It's the hardest word to spell. Let's bat, jump back over to Gleam while that's running. Delete that line and part of our problem. So one thing I want to do right off the rip is I have some other notifications we need to look at quick. We got an SDK, baby. All right, I can bump this number back up. Set batch size. Let's go to 100. Let's see if we can handle that for a while. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Um, uh, pull requests. you guys tell me if you can see this PR? I can't tell if like there's weird... I'm pretty sure that's a public repo. And like it wants me to sign on with my Vercel email. Even though I think it's public. Well, I guess I can check that in incognito, huh? Yeah, see, that's what I fracking thought. That's so annoying. Why is that doing that? Don't make me authenticate for a... Uh, where the frack is that thing? I don't even know where my... Okay. Let's go. What up, Kyle? I had to do some Terraform at work yesterday, Kyle. Okay. Uh, I don't really know, to be honest. Terraform confuses the hell out of me. I had to add a cron job. I copy and pasted another template. All right, can you all see this issue? Well, I guess I can just do the same thing here again, right? If I come here, yeah, okay, so these are all public, I thought so. I don't know how to test these. <laughs> Goodness. Ah. Okay, we're gonna have to fix that. All right, we got a couple things we gotta do here. Uh, where do we wanna start? We wanna go back. Let's check on, this song's a bop. What is this? I love this. 
the 502s. So I'm going to write a small little task list for us here. And it's going to be stream to do list because I'm getting so distracted. One, I should take my freaking allergy meds. And then I should finish doing my to do list before I forget. Stream to do, and we're gonna say one. Uh, figure out where the OCaml indent post install message comes from. Two, fix Vercel CLI PR. Uh, Wrap, get helpers, and try catch. Three, gleam. All right, that's the to-do list right there, chat. Nana's, <laughs> Nana's uh, proof of life text has been sent, chat. That is now part of our daily ritual. At AM, we have to text my Nana uh, to make sure she's alive. She's adamant we do this. She's very dramatic. You distracted? No. So I don't know if it's this one, but we'll install anyways. You should put that on a cron. I should actually. All right, well that's installing. Back to you. Do I not have? All right, so let's make a new session. New dash s, and this will be uh, Vercel. And um, we're gonna go to personal and up a directory, and we're gonna make a directory work. Change directory into there. And then we're going to do git clone git at github.com slash for cell slash for cell dot git. Okay, let's change into there. Uh, and we're gonna say nix shell nix packages and we need, I have this command over here. We need to bring in node.js 18. TypeScript, turbo, node packages, latest dot Vercel, and there's a typo. Vercel. That should be good.
Thought this sounded like NoCon. All right, is this done installing yet? So it wasn't this guy. So if we opam install OCaml format. Oops, that's a typo. <laughs> there it is. All right, we're going to get in a really annoying post install message here uh, at the end of that. Thank you. Rest station, appreciate you. camel.org and we get to install I'm gonna grab that and we want to come I've been helping and watching newcomers I've been helping teach a bunch of new folks a camel over the past few months comma and without fail every single person that uses every single person, especially those using Vim or NeoVim, get caught up on the post install message from OCP. What is this, OCP indent? When installing A camel format. Installing a camel format is the second step issued to newcomers to a camel on the ocaml.org site. Uh, let's go ahead and post that. What's up, Cyprian? Which then causes this output to be one of the first messages shown to newcomers in the ecosystem. I think this does not I think this is incredibly confusing and my actual preference would be to remove the post install script altogether.
but I think at the very least indicating that newcomers don't need to take action if they're using OCaml format is a fine solution as well. Okay, we'll see uh, how upset these people get. The one maintainer seemed pretty on board. All right, so I feel good about that issue. Um, I don't care about that, don't need any of that. Can ignore that. Don't need any of this. <laughs> You've been banned from contributing to this repository. I would honestly fork it and then uh, main, I would try to patch my fork into a camel format. <laughs> I think it's such a confusing thing. The fact that this is one of the first messages that people see when they start OCaml and it's pointless, like it doesn't impact anyone anymore. Like a decade ago, this was relevant, but now that we have like an actual formatter, like this is so confusing. Like, I don't think we should have a post install script that does this. This is bad. This is stupid bad. I appreciate the DevX they were going for a decade ago, but like it's not relevant. And now it's confusing and it's doing more harm than good. All right, let's go fix. Uh, we did this. Fix for cell PR. All right, let's go fix my PR for this. Um, I think I saw that this is failing. my tests because uh, let's look at this one exec is failing where's the failure or maybe we already have it open here we go this is the tab we wanted so git's not installed so we basically want to We need to wrap that in a try catch. That's the first thing we need to do. So let's go to Vercel, bump this open, and we're gonna get pool, and we're gonna check out DM and Mulroy, fix that. Vim and uh, PMPM, PM. the hell? Didn't I go into a Nix shell? I guess I have to do sudo core pack enable.
Uh, so now let's do PM and P, PM and P, uh, can't even talk. Can't talk at all today. P and PM install. Great. I'll replay that for you, Diva. All right, uh, I need to, uh, we're actually gonna use this uh, Gleam client to do this in the future. It's gonna pause the music and then it'll play the sound. Oh, it's on cooldown? I'm the freaking. oh my God. Hey Siri, set a timer for two minutes. 10 minutes starting Not now. Not 10, you freaking idiot. Start a timer for two minutes. Am I that stuffy? <laughs> All right, so we should have, uh, we got a build yet, PMP build. And now let's vim in. Whoa. Freaking Lewis snip. Always a problem. And we're going to go to uh, packages, CLI, source, utils, git helpers, I think is the file I made. Yeah, here we go. So in here, we need to wrap these in try catch. So let's do uh, try the worst feature ever added to any programming language ever. Error, throw that in there. It's gonna return false. And otherwise we're gonna take this. It's gonna go up here. Do that. And we wanna get the logger. How are they doing that in um, where's that debug at? Comes from client output. Is there any way to get the logger without So that just, sh all right, here we go, Diva. I got you. Here's the real redeem for you. <laughs> Alright, why didn't we end up in that tab? Let's go to the CLI. Is there anything under the CLI? CLI, CLI, CLI. So there's nothing. What? Uh, Gleam is going well. We haven't started Gleam. We're fixing a pull request I opened last night uh, for work. And um, uh, just updating this quick.
When exec sync is called, what does it use for its current repo? Does anyone that knows Node know that? Uh, it's probably the directory that the process is started from, I would think. Thank you for the follow, Alt. Appreciate you hanging out. I assume this is what exec sync uses by default, right? It's got to use current working directory. Ah. Oh, got to refresh my OAuth token. <laughs> what the fuck was that noise? I'll explain that noise in just a second. It is uh, an alarm. You'll probably hear it one more time before I get this copy pasted in. Ah! And there it is. Uh, yeah, I work at Vercel. I work on the um, lifecycle team. So uh, basically the team that um, we own a bunch, but like at a high level, you could think of us owning um, like the account, the user account. Not so much um, like sign up, but everything after that. So account management, uh, upgrading, downgrading plans, um, managing teams and projects and deployments. Um, yeah, so that noise you heard is we're running a giant migration at uh, work right now. Um, and it needs to be kind of babied and watched. Um, I have a laptop on my left, uh, my work laptop, and I have a script running that is batching data every 30 seconds into a queue to be processed and um, my OAuth token expires every 60 minutes so when it gets down to 50 minutes it starts making that noise which is actually I believe an actual mp3 of one of my coworkers making a ridiculous noise uh, that I didn't know was going to happen the first time I ran this so it scared the shit out of me um, but yeah, it's just a noise to indicate like, hey, you've got 10 minutes left to refresh your OAuth token before requests will start failing and we'll stop migrating.
Uh, let's ask ChatGPT. Does uh, nodes Yeah, honestly, um, for sales, pretty good. Okay, so that does use that. So we don't even need to set that. All right, we just need to wrap this in a try catch then. So let's do the same thing down here. And this will be error. Take that, throw that there. Come over here, this will return false. I really want to get the debugger passed in. Hmm. You guys are so ridiculous. So do we want to return a Boolean from this? Actually, I know what I want to do. Uh, so the error that this was throwing is command failed. Um, how can I try this? Let's go ahead and make a new temporary directory. Let's go in here and make their uh, node exec change. And we'll do... Um, touch index.js and vim index.js and let's just say const uh, child process equals require oh my god um, child get out of my way mason child process uh, That's fine. And we'll say um, try catch. And we'll say, no, we want error. We'll say child process dot exec sync um, git rev parse dash dash git there. And we'll say this needs some options. We want output as UTF 8. So encoding will be UTF 8. So this should give us a string. Uh, const, let's just say this is gonna be a function run. Going. Uh, this will be const uh, result equals that, and we'll return result. And in here, let's say we'll just rethrow the error for now, and then we'll come down here and we'll say run. So we shouldn't be in a Git repository here. So if we do uh, node shell, actually just this one, node index.js fatal not Git repository. So if I can get the message, let's say console.log, we'll say message 
is going to be error.message. Let's try that. So then let's try um, if error.message equals Throw that in there. So we do this. Let's say uh, console.log foobar. And then we'll just return. Otherwise, we'll rethrow the error. Yeah. Okay, that looks like what we want. So here we'll say, uh, let's just say return true and then return false. Can I prevent this from logging to standard out? That that has to be a way, right? Can I prevent exec sync from logging to standard out or and standard error? Standard IO ignore. Great. That's what we want. So now, great. That's what we want. So what do we actually want this to do? So the test that's failing, let's go read the actual test. Okay, did that not copy? That's like literally not pasting to my clipboard. How many years have I been coding? Uh, let's find out. Um, I've been coding since I was roughly 12-ish in the United States. How old are seventh graders typically? Yeah, 12, okay. Uh, if I was born in 1993, how old or what year was it when I was 12? 2005. Yeah, so I've been coding since 2005. So basically, Jesus Christ, basically... <laughs> 19 years. Holy shit. Holy shit, chat. I'm freaking old. I've almost been coding for 20 years. I'm having an existential crisis right now.
I've been coding more time than you've not. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how to feel right now. <laughs> I did not uh, expect to have a bout of existential dread this morning. So yeah, I've been coding for quite a while. All right, I don't wanna to listen to this song, that sucked. I don't wanna to listen to this either. Some old school Hollywood Undead. Throw back to middle school, let's go. Uh, chat, I need your opinion on this. So, in Vercel CLI, there is a part in almost all of our commands where um, we try to find the root of your repo. And um, as part of that, we were originally just looking for dot git slash config to determine the root, which is like a pretty common sense check. However, um, However, what was I gonna say? It was failing for git work trees and git some modules or repos that were git work trees or git some modules. So I, I ran into that problem at work yesterday trying to use our CLI with like our actual Vercel backend. Um, and then I found that there was an issue in the GitHub for it. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna fix this. Now I added these two functions, which is do two pretty basic checks to check if the current repository is a work tree or it gets some module. And we're having a test failing in CI CD where git is not a command, um, which I don't think should throw. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if this should throw off bare repos too. Uh, actually, probably. How do I create a bare repo? I should check that. Um, it's like dash s bare or something. Create git bare repo. Yeah. So let's try that quick. Bear test. <laughs> and then, no, no, someone, someone asked about that in the issue too. I forgot to cover it last night. That's a good call. Thank you. Uh, cat dot git ls dash la. So there's not even a dot git. Or wait, is this right? Create bare git repo. This doesn't seem like I made that correct. Is just the git directory. So what are the use cases for this? Like how does this, uh, this work? Let me go back to the actual issue. Uh, let me go to my PRs. Cloned with bear. So if I clone a repo,
Uh, let's just clone like one of my random, let's see what this gives me. Sure. So can I do bear here? Why would I ever do this? Yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna let that go for now because I don't understand the use case completely. <sighs> Write me a quick and simple tutorial on using the dash dash bear flag with git along with some common use cases. I spelled cases wrong, that's fine. Okay, regardless, I don't think this should throw Although we could, we could like pass in options, right? Like we could have like some like type options that's like, um, you only, and it could be like, um, unsafe or something. And unsafe would be a Boolean. And like, this would be like throw if an error is occurred, if an, if an error occurs. And then we could just add current working directory to this too, right? We could be like CWD, could just be um, uh, this would be a string. Uh, the directory to check defaults to process dot current working directory. Why would I do this in TypeScript? Because the CLI is built in TypeScript. It's not my choice. Throw it null error defaults to false. Get exec options.
Morning, Colchis. Unsafe. Um, current working directory will be process. We'll just leave this undefined. Eh, no, let's actually use process current working directory. And then we'll say this is going to be, I guess we can get rid of that equal, go here, this will be equal default, get exec ops. And then we'll say uh, const merged ops equals, um, I guess this can actually be like that. And we'll do, um, default and ops for overrides. And then this will be um, current working directory and unsafe. Um, actually, we need that above there do that and then down here we'll say if unsafe throw error otherwise return false yeah I think that's what we want and let's take this back over to ChatGPT and we'll say update the JS doc comment for is git work tree to account for taking ops instead of just CWD. I'm going to go through my coffee mug on the charger quick chat. I'll be right back. Text if a given directory is a git work tree. A git work tree is link is a linked working tree, so you have multiple working trees attached to the same. This function checks if a special tries. It's a git work tree by looking for the git pin. We can get rid of. Let's see what this looks like. So we should come in here and do this. That should look a little bit better. Um, at throws. And I say, uh, how does the at throws JS doc work? Uh, throws JS doc. Preform description. At throws, so we're just gonna say error. And then um, will uh, can throw an error if ops dot unsafe 
is set to true. We don't need that. I don't think. Yeah, there's extra dashes in here that aren't needed. Okay. All right, I think this looks pretty good. So let's actually add, um, oh, the type already does. So let's say as const satisfies get exec options. That's fine. Uh, why isn't this Gleam? What up, Shu? Uh, it's about to be Gleam. I'm working on Vercel CLI right now to fix a issue that I ran into yesterday that annoyed me and that's been open since June of 2023. We'll be in Gleam in about like, imagine working on Vercel CLI, it couldn't be me. Well, so let's add uh, this and we're gonna come down here and do the same thing. And I don't want to listen to this. We've had a couple misses here. I want to listen to let's listen to like my chemical romance. That's some middle school vibes. Can we start a radio from this. Yeah, let's go. Uh, okay, so then we can basically copy what we just wrote up here. Take that. And um, grab this. I hate try catch. Try catch is the worst feature ever invented in any programming language. Okay, uh, we got to update this JS doc now. I can just go there. And we can copy this and replace that. That looks good. Let's read this. Checks if the current working directory is part of a get some module, get some module is blah, blah, blah. This function checks if the current working directory or its specified directory is part of a git module by looking for the git modules path in the git configuration. Um, yep. That looks good. Returns true. Can throw an error if offset is set to true. Perfect. Yeah, for real. Um, I end up, I love like adding little result types. Uh, do I, have, uh, I don't think I have melange FFI pooled. Um, but I love making like a type, like actually I can show this in here. This is what we used at my last company. I have a bunch of just like nice pure functional utilities for TypeScript. And I wrote uh, the result type in here. Where is it at? And the entire team was on board with using result types. And it was so nice to have. Yeah, chat, if you write TypeScript, I would, uh, you should try using a type like this rather than try catching and see what you think about it. And there's an, an even better implementation of it API wise. Um, yeah, not implementation wise because this is kind of a special case, but I like the interface for this result type a lot in here. Um, 
fact, I could probably just go, do I have the .d.ts published? No, I don't. Yeah, right here, you can see the API on this. Is okay, is error, map, then, map error, unwrap or unwrap, unwrap error, two option, two chainable option, two list, two chainable list, two result. Like, I love using result types like this. And they're super easy to implement in TypeScript. All right, so this should be good now. Um, we sh should be able to just push this. And now we can jump over to Gleam once I commit this. Uh, let's say wrap get helpers in. I do not, Diva. I've been playing with the idea of making like a making a couple small like course sites. Like I think I could do like a functional programming for the rest of us. Um, that's like the big one I want to do and maybe like functional programming in TypeScript plus, uh, add get exec options. So let's push that. Uh, am I not logged on here? I should have my um how do I do this? Cat I sh that should be my uh private key. My private key should be fine for both. Okay, that should be good now, right? Oh, I am not in my Nick shell wall. Well, I'll have you know, chat, that Gleam, which we're getting ready to write for the next hour, is basically uh, garbage collected rust without having to fight the borrow checker. All right, so for some reason, let's just say do that click there. Get push. There we go. All right, so let's we'll see if the uh, the test pass on this now. Great. All right, time for Gleam. What probably most of you are here for. All right, so the first thing I wanna to do today is, um, well, one, let's get rid of our build errors. Uh, Gleam build, let me make sure I have all my changes. And Gleam build, here for the vibes. Well, I'm glad you enjoy the vibes, it's the most important part. So I want to get rid of, I made like this custom result type, which I don't need at all here. I don't want to have this anymore. This is kind of pointless, I think. So let's comment that for now. And then up here, uh, this is just going to be 2R. We don't need an HTTP request. We don't need to alias this anymore. Do that. Shu, are you still here? We just started on a uh, gleam here. 
I don't know if you saw the one thread I posted in Slack at work, but um, Gleam has Gleam can compile to JavaScript and it has .d.ts generation built into the compiler, which is like the number one feature I wish OCaml had when compiling to JavaScript. Check this out. Uh, so I wrote this Gleam file right here just as like a little test for it. So just like a user, hi Justine. Hi. Um, some just like a variant, right? Some just basic Gleam functions. And I uh, compiled this to JavaScript. So here's what the JavaScript looks like when it comes out. Pretty straightforward. And then the .d.ts that it generated was like actually pretty good. They're emulating nominal typing by extending uh, this class type, which is super clever. Like I, that's like, uh, I wish I could emulate nominal typing in Melange that way. Um, yeah, it's super cool. Uh, I guess this will be a string. Some old school bench sevenfold. So this doesn't need to be an option anymore, which gives us the benefit of not having to match on that. And we can just fold, yeah. Did you tell him good morning? Okay, so our merge becomes easier. At least for the most part. There you go, all your plants are watered. Mm -hmm. I'm rattled though, you just got to saying it's garbage collected rust and now you're popping .d.ts files. Listen, it can, it can compile to the beam and it can compile to JavaScript. So you could write, if you want to publish TypeScript or JavaScript libraries, you can just write Gleam and, Gleam and compile it to JavaScript instead. Did the dogs eat breakfast? Dogs did not eat breakfast, yeah. Okay. I figured since he's following me around, but... Wait, what happened? So it's like, it's giving people access to an actual good type system if they need to uh, have a deliverable of JavaScript. All right, so let's open up the Gleam HTTPT, or Jesus, <laughs> I cannot talk this morning. Gleam HTTP docs. And I wanna go look at the request type. The body is not optional, okay. Thank you uh, for the gift subs, anonymous person. I super, super appreciate you. While we're at it, let me uh, gift Shu a sub so he doesn't have to deal with ads. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Gleam is a lot like Reason. It's like what... I think if Reason was remade today, it would be this. The only thing that Reason has on Gleam is the entirety of the Okamo ecosystem, <laughs> which is a lot, but also that uh, you can just write JSX in a Gleam file or in a, a Reason ML file since it was made by uh, Jordan Walk. Yeah, no problem, dude. It just uh, it basically just goes right back to me. Uh, let's see here. We don't need to request that body JSON dot string. So we're we saying that this is JSON coming in. Is that what I said? Yeah. So this is going to be JSON. And let's then say we can just pipe this to json.toString and we don't have to worry about uh, mapping over a option type. One of the beautiful things about Gleam and why I think it's potentially like the best intro to functional programming is it because it teaches you to use monad monads without ever using the word monads. Which I guess now query, no, query is still an option. Expect to type list A, but found a string. That shouldn't be a string. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, I accidentally pressed Q. Perspective type list. How is that an so request dot query? Request dot query is still an option of string. Oh, it's because in my type I made it a option of list list, right? I'm not even sure I need this now. It's just, monads are just like type unions with the discriminator and types group but with first class language support. That's a good way to think about it. Um, Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. The best thread I've seen on monads is from um, uh, Aaron Adler, right? At underscore, yeah. At Aaron underscore Adler. So let's take that from, I think I have this bookmarked, but let's just see if I can find it this way. I'm not sure, uh, Restation. Here we go. This thread, this thread is the best explainer of monads I've ever read. Aaron does such a good job. So I'm going to read through this chat because I think it's valuable because I'm assuming most people in chat have an interest in, um, I honestly have no idea what part of Gleam is monadic, lol, so you must be right. Yep, exactly. Uh, I'm just going to read this quick. So, I've been inspired by Lambda Priest to attempt my own monad explainer. Not that the world needs it, it's that I need it. Are you really a functional programmer if you've never tweeted trying to explain monads? Uh, but I actually don't want to talk about monads at all. I want to talk about numbers, specifically the number two. Let's close our eyes, take a deep breath, and go back to when we were five years old. 
we're in a math class and the teacher is trying to teach us all about the number two. Now I have no idea what's going on, but the teacher seems very excited. They brought in, ton, in a ton of pictures and toys to try to make a point, but all I care about is the toy cars. What up, Dev Dad and Raiders? We are working on more Gleam this morning and building a Twitch SDK. If y'all aren't following the Dev Dad, you 100% should be. Uh, right now, chat, we are going through a thread on what monads is, or what monads are. So I'll, I'll just quickly restart here since we're only a couple tweets into this thread. Um, let's start here. I don't want to talk about monads at all. I want to talk about numbers, specifically the number two. Let's close our eyes, take a deep breath, and go back to when we were five years old. We're in a math class, and the teacher is trying to teach us all about the number two. Now, I have no idea what's going on, but the teacher seems very excited. They brought in a ton of pictures and toys to try and make a point, but all I care about is the toy cars. There's a blue one and a red one. Wow. I hope I'll get to play with them later. There's also a picture of someone's hands and a plush mummy and daddy giraffe. Now, the teacher is asking us what all these things have in common. Um, what the fuck do they have in common? Nothing. Some are pictures, some are real things, some are hard, some are soft, some look like animals, some look like inanimate objects. I think the teacher is an idiot. Now let's close our eyes and take a deep breath again. Now back in our adult form, we know what the teacher was getting at. There are two of each thing. But unless you already get the concept of two, you won't be any the wiser by someone just showing you a list of two things and asking you what these things have in common. You have no idea what they have in common. Surely that's the teacher's job to explain that. I think this is where people get confused. Expl explanations of monads featuring burritos and shit just cause people to think, what do burritos and promises and lists and maybes all have in common? Be fucked if I know and give up. They give up because a monad isn't a thing. It's just a set of properties. Just like Tunis isn't a thing. And if you look at a room full of pairs of things, you will struggle to find out what plushy giraffes and toy cars have in common. Thus concludes my view on why monads seem really hard to explain. Because people give one example. Monads are like burritos. Monads are like boxes. And now the reader is left wondering which parts of the burrito map to which parts of the monad. Where does the analogy end and the monad begin? Which parts of the analogy are actually load-bearing here and which are just to hold up the analogy? Okay, great. We know why explanations are hard. Because it's hard to convey a picture of something when the thing you're trying to convey is only part of your analogy, not the whole thing. Is the number two the pair of shoes or the green and red apple in the bowl? No, it isn't either the shoes or the apples. The number two just has one aspect in common with both of these pairs. There are two of each item. Okay, now let's take uh, a deep breath. God damn it. One second, have to refresh my OAuth token. What a time to get hit with that. I'm going to have to clip that. Somebody clip that. Uh, okay, let me go. Ah! I know, I'm updating it. Uh, go here, go here, go to the end, paste that in, save that. That doesn't seem right. Uh oh, it's gonna do it again, chat. I'm so sorry. Oh, I might have made it in time. I think we're Gucci. Yep, we're good. Okay, now let's take a deep breath, for real. Whale song plays, the chirping of nightingales in the crisp morning air, a montage of galaxies, a calm woman's voice says, clear your mind. Waves crash on the shore. Okay, that was nice. Our mind is nice and clear. Now let's talk about promises. As it happens, Promises are instances of monads, but that's not relevant for now. Shh, forget I said anything. Promises are useful and fun. They let us do all sorts of cool things. We can use promises to represent long-running processes without having 
our entire application grind to a halt while we wait for a long network request to complete. Often it's useful to chain promises together. First make an HTTP request A and using the result of A, make request B and then give me the result of B. Ordinarily making two nested promises would return a promise promise B, but it turns out we can flatten promises so that the whole A and then B request is just promise B. Great, we only need to handle one level of dot venning or awaiting. This keeps everything nice and simple. Now let's talk about something completely different, options. Option types can be used to represent, well, optional data. That is data that may or may not exist. Now let's say we want to store the result of a division, e.g. For example, 10 divided by two or six divided by four. If the result is valid, great. But oh, hang on, there's this pesky thing with division that some divisions are forbidden. You can't divide by zero. Okay, well, no problem because we know about the option type. We can make our division always return an option, which means we always, which means we always either, Jesus Christ, we mean, which means we always something, the, either the result is there, the just case, or it doesn't exist because you tried to divide by zero, in which case it will be nothing. Cool, nice. But we may want to divide by numbers multiple times, in which case we want to divide a number which returns a result. But then we get an option. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess we can still divide the number if it's an option and just not do anything if the option is empty. But if we, what if we divide multiple times? Hmm, well, I guess then uh, we'd end up with a option of option number. Hmm, but oh, it turns out there's a function that lets you flatten two nested options into a single option. Neat. Oh, and there's also a helper function that lets you do an operation on an options value that returns an option and flattens it all in one go. Woohoo! Looks like that function is called bind. Cool? Cool. So now we can divide 12 by three and divide that result by four and we get an option number, which is the case, which in this case is just one. What if instead we divide 12 by zero and then by four? Well, you can predict what you get. The first division will fail, so we end up with a big fat nothing. The division by four doesn't ever run because, well, there was a forbidden operation earlier in the chain. So we had to stop the presses, no more work to do. Everyone goes home early. Okay, nice, nice, great. That's all nice and easy and not very challenging at all. What was this again? A monad explainer? Where are the monads? Well, my friend, you've already seen two monads in action. What? Yes, that's right. This ability to flatten that we just saw two examples of is the heart of what a monad is. What flattening? Well, do you remember that we could chain two promises together in a way that returned a single promise? Cool, no? And the way we could chain two divisions together in a way that returned a single option? Cool, no? Oh, so what you're saying is the, that the ability to flatten is what a monad is all about. Even though this flattening can take wildly different forms depending on the particular thing you're flattening, exactly fucking right. But this flattening is so abstract, like the flattening of promises and options are so completely different. Right, that's why monads are not things, but just a property that things can have. Just like the toddler bewildered by what on earth a blue and red toy car have in common with a pair of shoes, you already know the answer. There's two of them. It's an underwhelming answer. Yeah, I already knew that I could hold one toy car in each hand and same with the shoes, but it turns out that sometimes labeling these abstract things can be useful. For example, if you know that there are two applies, uh, I'm guessing that's apples, two apples and two toy cars and two giraffes, then you know that no matter what the things are, there's always enough to have one for yourself and one for your baby brother. Same with monads. If you can use promises and options, then you already know what a monad is, but womp womp, it's so underwhelming. Oh, they can be flattened? That's it? Yes, but as it happens, knowing that you can flatten chain slash sequence things can turn out to be really useful also. It means you can also it means you can use a set of common interfaces and patterns and APIs and operators to sequence things, no matter what kind of thing that monad behaving thing is, whether a promise or something is seemingly wildly unrelated as an option. Now, if right now you don't know what these patterns are and so can't see why anyone would care whether a thing is a monad like or not, that's fine, it doesn't really matter. The point is that you can use them and some people, me included, find those patterns pretty helpful. 
But what I would recommend is stop focusing on what a monad is and keep using your options, promises, lists as usual. I suspect that over time, as you try and use the flat map, bind, and then functions for each, you'll slowly build out your intuition for why those are useful. And once you see why they're useful, you might see that, hey, it's pretty nice that I can structure the same kind of behavior in all these different things in a consistent way. Just like it can be nice to have a consistent way to describe having two of something, no matter whether that thing is toy cars, apples, or shoes. Hands down the best monad explainer of all time. I agree with you, well typed Twitch. <clears throat> but I don't think that's super important. Uh, I don't think that's important for getting the point across. And I think he does it in a remarkably clear way. All right, let's get these docs back up. That thread was longer than I thought I remember it being, but I'm glad we've read through it anyways. So what does this set query type take? So it does take a list of string string. However, this is not a string string. Because it is a string. See this, this, this has an inconsistent API. And this is what I'm talking about on this GitHub thread I opened. Um, oh, somebody already responded to me here. We'll come back to that. That's a good idea. Uh, we'll come back to this. Mark is unread. Um, where is my PR? to Gleam HTTP. So it's confusing that the set header, so set query, set header and set query are fundamentally similar, semantically similar, right? Like you have essentially a list of key value pairs um, and you need to like set them like in the case of query params you, you convert that to an encoded string and in the case of headers you add that to a request type as key value pairs but the set query takes a list of string string but the set header takes a key and value for a single one but then on the actual request type itself it's modeled as queries and option string and headers is a list of key value pairs. Like the design of the type and the API seems at odds with each other. So the way to do this annoyingly is gonna be request and then we spread the new request and then we're gonna say, um, in fact, I don't even wanna do it this way. We're just gonna add this to our model ex or module ex our, our request extension module. Um, this is going to be set query string. And we'll say request extension. We'll do that. And let's go to rec this. And we'll say pub fun set, Jesus, set query string. And this will take a request that is a request of some generic body type. And it will also take a um, query, parent, query, which will be a string. And it's going to return a request of body. Thanks for the thread. Yeah, no problem.
Yeah, I think that uh, flat map and bind has way better. I think and then is uh, better. And like, I really like Gleam's version for the result monad called try. I think that makes a ton of sense. So if you were to look at my, um, let me find glitch.gleam in here, result.try is the bind or flat map or dot then function, which in fact, this is just an alias for dot then. And this is like the monadic bind, this use syntax. So it basically will unbox or return immediately. Super nice. So here we just, um, I think this will just be request dot 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 request and then it'll be query um, some query. Oh, it's not three dots, it's two. And what's this upset about? Did you mean bool? No, that should be lowercase b. Uh, if I could type. And we have to go import our option type. Import gleam slash option. And let's grab our sum. Great. And then this should actually be building, I think, now. Or I guess the user probably still has some issues. This is a throwy. So what's wrong here now? Ah. So uh, instead, let's actually have it take an option parameter just to make it as ergonomic as possible to work with the request type that we have. So this will actually take a option of a string. And then we can get rid of this. And it will just be query. Go. Where's our warning in here? Mm, we're definitely using that. That was a weird LSP error. That's fine. Uh, so back over here, this function is now good. Oops. All right, so then in here, we really want to, I guess maybe we do put it on the, we can just make this JSON. 
put it on the collar to encode their payload. We could also make a JSON encoder. Like we could do a, a API that looks like encoder and it would be JSON encoder uh, of input, right? And then we could pass the encoder into here. And what would that look like? from a caller's perspective. If we go to user, okay, I can get on board with that. So let's go to our JSON extension, extended module, and we're gonna make a new type and we're gonna say public type JSON encoder is gonna have some generic input and it'll be a function that takes our input and returns JSON. Yeah. Now we can type this as a JSON encoder of input. Oh, A, I guess. JSON encoder of A. So if we do that, then back in our client, oops, and JSON extended, let's bring in type JSON encoder, right? And then we can go here. And this will now take a uh, encoder, which will be a JSON encoder of, in fact, this ends up being a string again. Or wait, what? Now I just confused myself. This would be input. So then we just say, um, we encode the body with the encoder. encoder encode Oh, we already have yeah. Nice. That's a pretty good API right there. I like, I like how in Gleam you can name, you can give parameters a name and then rename them as the binding like this. I think that makes for really nice APIs. 
Uh, looks like we can remove a bunch of unused stuff. Uh, oops. And do we have type errors over here? Are we building right now? In what function? API client type request. User gleam. Oh, we have the same file open. Right, we don't need that anymore. This just becomes a normal request. So I guess we just do new. This will be request. Thank you for the follow there, 611 drunk. Dunk, not drunk, maybe I'm drunk. Jesus. Uh, so we need to say this takes an encoder now, so to JSON. Expected type of string to JSON. Is that right? Why does it want a string to JSON? Shouldn't it be a generic type to JSON? Uh, stuck in for loop, I set OBS um, up to um, not record my desktop um, audio to the Twitch track. So like the music never ever makes it to the Twitch rod. I haven't used Devin at all. Ah, it's because we haven't set our request yet. Right. We got to do this whole thing. Uh, request dot uh, set body. And that will be none. In fact, we don't even need to do that because that's probably the empty. Wait, is body? Damn it. It's probably an empty string. But we don't even need to send an encoder in here. Right. So this should actually be like an option. Maybe we put encoding and decoding. 
on the collars, even though that's not, yeah, okay. I think I'm convinced that I don't want to do this. Yeah, I don't think I want to do this. And then let's go up here and we'll move encoding out. And we'll just do that. So we'll enforce that um, we'll enforce that when any of the resource modules use the client to issue HTTP requests that they create their own request on their own and serialize and deserializes that those modules' responsibility. And then we don't, this will end up getting moved to, um, this will get moved over here. And we can get rid of this. We can get rid of the do notation and just do this. The request constructor, um, could you expand on what you mean, uh, Alice? And this can probably actually get renamed to finalize request or prepare request. Why does the request constructor expose its implementation if you usually use it abstractly anyway? That just seems like it. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this API on the request type. Um, like it's just, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me that headers is a list of uh, string tuples, but query is an option string, but then the set query builder function takes a list of string string, but the set header function takes a key value. Like it's fairly inconsistent, which is why I opened this PR here. In fact, I think there should probably be another PR to have something like set query that takes a string, like set query string like I made. Okay, um, back to this though. Let's get our user module rotated over here. And now get takes a client and a request of JSON. So this 
set body is going to be um, JSON. Do I have JSON imported in here? I do. Okay. JSON dot two string, just like empty. Or from string and do that. Uh, where is that package? Gleam JSON. Two string of string decode. Do I use dynamic to do this? How was I doing this before? All right, I have a I definitely have a two JSON uh, function in here. Thank you for the follow there, Tony Ofti. And also Drood. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> oh, why can't a single language learn from Java's mistakes? Rip. Okay, so that does have Why didn't I see that in the docs? Because I'm blind. That's why. So now we want to do the thing where we have to map our user request to an HTTP request, which is going to be annoying-ish. Mm -hmm. We have to do, at this point we won't ever, we won't, we shouldn't have to merge headers. Oh, just kidding. Yeah, we will. So this should really end up returning an option string instead. Or no, no, this is okay. We can do this because the the language has that weird. Okay, we're good there. So if we come down here, we can say, um, I don't know what I was just doing there, request.set uh, query, and this will take query params from user request request. Expected type list found type. So we can go back to this function and this will Maybe we just have this return a list rather than an option. Which we don't need this bit then.
and down here that should be happy yep great and then we can set request uh, set path will be users we do need to set the headers so we need to map what we were previously doing where were we doing that I guess we don't need to set headers. Disregard. And I think we can just do response dot try map our decoder, which is of JSON. Expected type of response A, found type of result. Wait, is this a result? How is that? Okay, that seems fine. So we should be able to do, or wait, what is this again? We'd have to do result.try, okay, dot .try, and then this would be result dot, a response dot, try map. which would be of JSON. Expected arity. Oh, is this where I use that syntax, currying syntax? Uh, what is it like this? Oh, I see. We have to do that in here. This would be um, result dot replace error with a request error, right? Why is that not fine?
Oh, interesting. Because I can get an API require API error. We can make request error generic. Something like this. And then get rid of that. This should be map error. Why can't that be generic? Is that not okay? Why can't I do that? Why can't it infer that? That seems like it should be inferrable or be okay. Thank you for the follow, Lazarus. So I think we just have to unbind or unbox it here. It needs to be result dot try. Oh, there we go. This should be a response user or string.
So then we can say um, this bit right here. Response can go into response dot try map of JSON, and then this goes into um, let's just at first do result dot replace error with a D, uh, request error, and then we'll map the decode error after that, and then we have to wrap up now anyways, chat. Okay, so that looks good. That's actually what we wanted. Um, now, what do you try map of decode error? So I think I can just change this to map error. And then instead of this, we can change this. Yeah, there we go. Nice. That's what we want. That's a great place to leave off. That's the pattern. Which we can probably get rid of this API error type too. Import gleam slash dynamic and import the type dynamic. And we can get rid of this. There we go. Nice. All right, this is coming together. And we should be building. Gleam build uh, client.gleam. Yep. There we go, chat. Look at that. That's a good pattern. I'm happy with that. Um, update um, client plus user. Get push. Let's find somebody to raid. It's time for the day job. Uh, let's see here. We've got Prime, Tej. Um, is anyone doing any functional programming? Probably not. Let's search for OCaml. Nope. Functional. Nope. Um, let's see, we've got 91 viewers, so it might be fun to raid somebody with a smaller stream here. Anyone doing anything that's not game dev? That has a relatively low amount of viewers. Game dev, game dev, game dev. Ah. Yes, I hear you. Learning C. There's so much game dev. see here. Thank you for the follow, poor cow. Maybe this person.
That's in Spanish. Oh my god, it is literally all game dev. Alright, we'll just raid this person. Adrian learns. Go show them uh, some functional programming and OCaml and Gleam love, y'all. I appreciate everyone hanging out, and uh, I probably won't stream tomorrow, but I might stream on Sunday. If not, I'll see you on Monday morning. Thank you everyone for hanging out. Super appreciate all of you.